Okay, okay, I'll sit up straight. Space program is exciting because they send people out there and, you know, sometimes they either, you know, fly around in the spaceship or maybe they just float around out there. My biggest fear isn't so much leaving the planet, it's the bathroom situation. I feel like uh, it's very strict parameters up there. You're not going to find, uh, you know, you can't go to the bathroom comfortably. I feel like it's more of a necessity thing as opposed to just, you know, just... just Go, you know what I'm saying. Like, I feel like there wouldn't be a lot of relaxing. Steve Wonder here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to keep looking at the Intune identities versus the Entra device identities and see what the differences are. We're going to start interacting with them. We're actually going to take a deeper look into uh, how to work with them in the Microsoft Graph as well. No, the bathroom isn't the only reason I'm not going to space. I mean, I'm not qualified and there's nothing really interesting for me up there. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so in our last episode of, where are we here? This one, uh, what's the difference between Intune and Intra devices? Uh, we got a lot of great feedback. Apparently this was something that's been bothering a lot of people and I don't blame you because it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to take a closer look at the properties we get when we look at these objects under the graph. Uh, why can't I do what I want here? Graph Explorer. I'll remember the URL for this one day. I, I definitely will. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the Graph Explorer or the Microsoft Graph, I have previous episodes on it. I always switch that to beta. So let's talk about the two different endpoints first, right? So when we talk about endpoints, you know, you have endpoints that represent objects in Intune here. So Intune and all the devices you see within Intune have a very specific endpoint in the Microsoft graph. So what that means is, oh, didn't mean to close that. What that means is here, if I were to look up device management, that's telling the graph we wanna look at Intune. Managed devices is going to list to me all the devices I have managed by Intune. So if I run that query, I'm going to see everything down here is exactly the same as what's listed when I go to devices, all devices. Now, of course, because I clicked on Windows, we're actually doing a filter. Okay, so if I want to filter this down to Windows here, I can do question dollar uh, filter equals, let's do contains, contains, and in the parentheses we'll put operating system, comma, windows. That should only return objects with the operating system containing windows. Now what did I do wrong? I think I need to put a space there and perhaps single quotes. Okay, that did it for us. So looking at all the Windows devices here is going to show us all the uh, Windows devices here. So same thing. So this is where we're getting the properties. And just to show you how that works, if I'll click on, you know, this device down here, look at the object ID in the URL to be 2db7. I can paste that in here and find the ID. I could also just get rid of the filter and go directly to the ID and run the query. Okay, so this is gonna actually pull up the device. Now remember that object, if we go back to look inside of Intune, if we go to the, oh, sorry, hardware, the 2db7 BDE4 is the Intune device ID. So this is how Intune categorizes the device. So to Intune, this is the device name. Okay, so we have PowerShell opened up, and the first thing I'm going to do is connect to the graph, and I'm going to create a Intune device variable. So Intune device, that will be equal to this call here, right? I want to get this whole, this whole URL, because I want to return everything inside of it. So in order to do that, we're going to invoke an MG graph request. And this is part of the 
of course, the graph module. My method is a get. Now notice the method here, that's the same as C get here. So everything kind of matches up with each other, right? Um, get, and then in quotes, we'll throw our URL in. So if I hit, actually, I forgot the URI. URI, okay, that should do it. So if we run this, let's see what came back. If I call Intune device, yeah, I'm getting all that info back the same way I would get it back from down here in the graph. The only difference is with PowerShell, I can uh, pipe it out to OGV for an out grid view and get a much easier look at this, right? So look at that. So one of the attributes here though, pertains to the Azure object, technically the enter object, but Microsoft hasn't changed the name. So if we were to go look down here, we're gonna find an attribute that says Azure AD device ID. And that right here is the Entra device ID. So now that we have that ID, we can simply go look up the device in Entra, right? Cause that should be the Entra ID. We already found the Intune one. This is where things get a little complicated. So we need to expose the glue as I call it. We can get that value just by piping it out in PowerShell. So we can say Intune device is Azure AD device ID, and that'll pipe that out. So I should be able to take this, copy it, and let's head back over to, uh, let's actually go to the entry portal because we're gonna look at the same things here. Devices, all devices. So if I were to click on any device here, I should see it at the top. So see, that's the object ID, great. In fact, let me just replace that with my ID. Well, why does that come back as nothing there? Let's go back to all devices. I could even search for it. It says by device or object ID. So what did we had? We had the device ID. So let's, let's talk about this for a second. Okay, so let's imagine these boxes are the Intune and the Entra device object. So the Intune device is located in the web at intune.microsoft.com. From a graph perspective, it's located at HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash device management managed devices. Because remember, everything you see in the GUI has a back end to it. Now on this side, you kind of have a similar thing going on. Obviously that's much shorter. Entra.microsoft.com is where you see these, but graph.microsoft.com beta devices is where you're gonna see the Entra devices. Right, so if you take a look at what each of them has in terms of attributes, um, you're going to see they have an Intune device object, which is how they identify. So the Intune device object is how you identify the device against the endpoint. So if I want to add the slash device object with, that's what would bring me here. Similarly with Entra, the Entra object is what I would append to the devices endpoint to get the entry object. Okay, but notice now they have the same attribute that actually matches them. So this is kind of your binding attribute if you want to link the two. So Intune device ID, Microsoft entry device ID. And you can see here we have the device ID and the object ID. So this device ID is this Microsoft entry device ID. And that's how they link. Let's hit up the entry device and make that a variable. Invoke MG graph request method is get the URI this time is HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash devices slash well wait what do I put here I don't know what it is. Assuming you only have one of these objects which is the manage device ID, you can get that. And look what we did. We did Intune AAD device ID to find that. So that'll be the Entra device ID. So we can look that up. If I go take you through the graph here again, let's go find a graph object. So Microsoft calls that the device ID. So really all we have to do is run a little query on this. So we'll say where the device ID equals 
and we'll just call this device ID just to, to uh, this ID could also call this the glue. <laughs> this is the Intune device above with the Azure AD device ID. So now we have a variable there. In fact, I'm going to call that glue filter equals device ID EQ. And in single quotes, we are going to put our variable and then closed double quotes. So let's go ahead and run that line. Let's see how it came back. Enter device. Hmm. So it's something, but what is the hash table? So because we had to use a filter, we're not going to get back the straight object. We have to break it out with a dot value. So we can do one of two things. I can call it here. Entra device dot value. And there's all my attributes. But if I want to store it in the variable, I could just do this. I can put a parentheses around this whole thing and add the dot value here. So let's clear this again. Let's run this line. Just make things a little easier for ourselves. And now I can call Entra device. Perfect. All right, so we're going to pause there. Um, this was a really good example of how to find the Entra object using the Intune device ID or the Intune object when we really don't know what that Entra object is. Now, of course, if you were just looking on the back end of the console, you're going to be able to look it up and query here. But we want to get into starting to do some automation around things where we deploy a script to Intune and, you know, maybe change something on the Entra side. So we have to correlate them without knowing right or with only knowing the Intune side of it. So that's a good example of how we can find that right breaking down the objects in the next episode, because yes, I filmed this all at once. It's like uh, it's the Matrix or the Avengers or something. Don't worry about that part. In the next episode, we're going to talk about what the differences are in the attributes and how we can use attributes from one side to organize or change attributes on the other side. And that's it. We'll be seeing you.